If you don't feel ennobled by your porn-related masturbation, then perhaps that means it's of questionable utility. I certainly don't see it as a stabilizing social force. I don't see it as something people do in public and, and brag about. I think people shouldn't lie, especially to themselves. And I think repeatedly engaging in a behavior that you judge yourself to be morally reprehensible is a form of performative contradiction, which is the acting out of a lie. And I suspect you know that or you wouldn't be asking the question. And so, you know, what should you do with pornography? Well, you know the answer to that, and so does everybody else. Everyone knows it's not good. It's not good for those who produce it. It's not good for those who participate, wittingly or unwittingly, because there's plenty of them, in its production. It's not good for its consumers. The less porn, the better. That's my advice. But let's make that more specific. To the degree that use of porn and masturbation is undermining your sense of yourself and providing you with a dearth of motivational reasons to get out there and engage with a real partner, then it's definitely not in your best interest and that's what your conscience is telling you. You know, and it's, it's, it's the expedient at the expense of the meaningful. Obviously, right? Obviously. There isn't any more obvious manifestation of the expedient at the expense of the meaningful than pornography and masturbation. And that's hardly a heroic path. So maybe the less of it, the better. There are dopamine circuits in your brain. The wonderful thing about with addictions um, is technically called the mesolimbic circuit. We call it the desire circuit, which okay. is a bit more descriptive. The desire circuit gives you reward. We also call it the reward circuit, mm -hmm. right? Eat when you're hungry, you get a pat on the back when you do a good job, you get an award. All of these things uh, promote your evolutionary success. So we, we work to um, stimulate our dopamine reward center. Now, chemicals like cocaine and alcohol and nicotine, they artificially stimulate this this center and some of them can, can hit it like a nuclear weapon and give it a stronger blast than any natural behavior can do. Now a lot of times we make decisions in life based on what's going to give us more dopamine. So for example, um, should I go to work today or should I go see a movie? Well I'm going to go to work. If I see a movie, that's going to have a really negative effect on my future and that feels rational. Now, when drugs start giving these chemical blasts of dopamine to the limbic system, it starts to feel rational to do drugs instead of other things. And so when you see some poor guy out on the street and he's lost his job, his house, his family, his health for his drug, you say, my God, what on earth is making him do that? That's crazy. But from the inside, it appears perfectly rational. He's choosing the thing that gives him the biggest dopamine. And in the absence of drugs, that's a strategy that usually works. Every morning, you go to the bakery and you get a cup of coffee and a croissant, okay? And that's your habit. In the beginning, it gave you dopamine, uh, right? Because it was new. But only novelty can give you dopamine. After a while, it becomes the same old, same old. All right, so you're standing in line for your croissant and your coffee. Some of your phone rings. And someone's like, drop whatever you're doing and get over here right now. And you get no croissant and coffee that day. In the brain, dopamine is shutting down and it's making you feel resentful and deprived. That's how it feels to have a dopamine deficiency. You feel resentful and deprived. Happy can mean different things. Uh, so for example, if I say, I'm happy that I'm going to get a new iPhone, it's a different feeling than saying, I'm happy because I just got this new iPhone. Those are two very, very different things. When you are happy about something that's going to happen, it makes you feel excited, energized. Maybe it makes you feel strong and powerful and confident. When you're happy because you have something, it makes you feel satisfied and fulfilled. Um, and, and it's like, ah. And those are very different feelings. Some people like one more than the other. You know, others like the other. It's one thing to choose dopamine instead of here and now because it gives you pleasure. That's a choice. But it can very easily get to the point where you're no longer in control. 
you're no longer making choices. Dopamine is controlling you. And, and a good example of that is doom scrolling, right? You're going through your social media, you're bored, you're maybe even unhappy, but you can't stop scrolling. Because what dopamine is saying is one more scroll and there might be something that will change your future and you can't miss that. And, and, and so that's an example. Another example is, is compulsive eating, for example, right? We're no longer enjoying that third donut, but something is making us eat it. Dopamine isn't has a message. It's telling your brain. So if you're out searching for food and you're a hunter-gatherer and you go to a tree and you eat some of the apples and my goodness, that's really good. Well, dopamine is squirting and it's helping you remember. It's helping you remember where that tree was so you can go back to, to get it again. Well, dopamine says this activity is really good. Remember it and please do it again because it's necessary for your survival. Dopamine is for remembering and repeating a behavior. It's not about pleasure. So as the dopamine levels are high, let's say you're on a two hour session of going through a uh, hundred videos, it starts to, and here's where you hear about rewiring. It actually rewires, makes connections and connects all the events associated with your addiction, whether it's cocaine, whether it's watching porn, and then it creates a pathway. It creates a very powerful pathway that can blast the reward center with high levels of activation, making cravings. So that any type of cue, turning on your computer, pop-ups, name of your porn site, actually activates the brain and releases sometimes higher dopamine than the addiction itself. Get that? The before I'm gonna use can often release higher dopamine than the act of taking the drug or engaging in your behavior. So that's overwhelming to the system and it's hard to ignore and your primitive brain thinks you're doing something to keep yourself alive, necessary for survival. It feels like that. And of course the analogy that's often used is creating these pathways, you know, you go through a, a field and if you take it five times, you eventually create a pathway of least resistance and now you have a preferred pathway with porn for sexual arousal, escape, relief, whatever you want to name it. And this is the core addiction change. This is where everything starts with addiction.